Hello and welcome to the Otago Chemistry Channel. In this series of videos, we will teach you some simple experiments that you can use to teach chemistry at a variety of year levels. In today's lesson, we will look at physical reactions and the states of matter. Now, all matter is made up of particles. Take this measuring cylinder, for example. Inside this 20 milliliters of water is seven times by 10 to the 23 particles of water. That's a lot of particles, but how big is that number really? Wow, that's a lot of zeros. Looks like you're gonna run out of whiteboard there, Trudy. All those particles, all in 20 milliliters of water. But what do they actually look like? Well, each water particle is made up of an oxygen and two hydrogens. Hence the formula H2O. Good work, Trudy. There are three states of matter, solid, a liquid, and a gas. The only difference between these states is how the particles within them are arranged. In a solid, the particles are tightly packed together to form a rigid structure. In a liquid, the particles aren't held as tightly together and are able to move over each other. And in a gas, the particles are able to move freely to occupy the entirety of whatever container they inhabit. Changing from one state of matter to another is called a physical reaction. To demonstrate some physical reactions, we are going to use liquid nitrogen. Now at room temperature, nitrogen makes up most of the air that we breathe. However, if you are able to cool nitrogen down to minus 196 degrees centigrade, it condenses from a gas into a liquid. That sound you can hear is the liquid nitrogen boiling or evaporating as it touches the dish. Over time, this boiling will slow down as the dish is also cooled. The fog you can see is due to the liquid nitrogen condensing water vapor in the air, since it is so cold. This is the same type of fog that you see on a chilly winter's morning. Now we're ready to do some physical reactions. Exhibit A, a mandarin. Mm-mm. Juicy and delicious. Now let's see what happens to that liquid water when we put the mandarin in the liquid nitrogen. The liquid nitrogen is freezing the water and that heat is being transferred from the mandarin to boil the nitrogen. The water inside the mandarin is now a solid. Now the key thing about a physical reaction is we're not changing the particles themselves, only the way they are arranged. Once that mandarin is thawed back out, it'll be as tasty and delicious as it was at the start. Exhibit B, an onion. You have probably seen one before in your mother's kitchen. It's not quite as juicy or delicious as a mandarin. Oh, oh, oh. All the water between the onion's layers freezes into crystals. Something quite spectacular has happened to our onion as it's frozen. What does it do when it smashes? Smashing. Exhibit C, a rubber hose. Now this is neither juicy nor delicious. Hmm. It's a solid, but it's flexible. 
due to it containing a type of energy called elasticity. Now have a guess where that elasticity is going to go when we put it in the liquid nitrogen. Elasticity has travelled from the hose into the nitrogen causing it to boil and now the hose is brittle. So we've now seen four types of physical reactions, melting, freezing, evaporation and condensation. But there are still two more mysterious physical processes that we haven't seen. In order to investigate these two processes, we're going to need a special chemical. In the box is dry ice. Now dry ice is solid carbon dioxide. Like nitrogen, carbon dioxide is a gas at room temperature, but when it's cooled down to minus 78 degrees centigrade, it becomes a solid. Now unlike regular ice, it doesn't melt. Instead it goes straight from a solid to a gas. That's what we call sublimation. It takes a long time in air, and it's a lot quicker in water. Look at all those bubbles of carbon dioxide as the dry ice sublimes in the warm water. Notice also that there's a thick layer of fog being formed from the surface of the water. This is one of the most common ways the fog is artificially produced. Now because we're chemists we quite enjoy making a mess of things. So we're going to add some washing up liquid to trap some of those carbon dioxide bubbles as they sublime off the dry ice. And here they come. Now because the carbon dioxide is heavier than air, these bubbles don't float off into the sky, they sink down to the ground. So that's sublimation. And the opposite of sublimation is reverse sublimation. Here is a balloon filled with carbon dioxide. When it's placed in the liquid nitrogen, the balloon shrinks in size as the gaseous carbon dioxide is reverse sublimed back into dry ice. Now, let's compare that to a balloon of helium. Now helium's lighter than air, which is why it floats. Helium condenses into a liquid at minus 269 degrees centigrade. So the liquid nitrogen isn't cool enough to turn it from a gas into a liquid. The liquid nitrogen is causing the balloon of helium to shrink. Why would this be the case? Well, if I may, I'll explain why our balloon is shrinking. See, a balloon inflates because the particles of gas inside it are pushing apart the rubber and pushing against all the molecules of air on the outside. As we cool down that balloon, those particles inside it have less energy and therefore can't inflate it quite as much. There we are. Get back to it. Now, obviously particles are so small, we can't actually see what they're doing when we're cooling this balloon. So I'm going to need a bit of help from the class to demonstrate what's going on in these physical reactions. Imagine each member of the class is a particle. Here, they are arranged as a solid. They're held together in a rigid structure. Each particle is moving, but they do not have enough energy to break away from the bonds holding them together. Now when we apply enough heat, the temperature of the particles increases. As a result, they now have enough energy to begin to overcome their bonds and move apart from each other. We have melted the class, and they are now behaving as a liquid. When even more heat is applied, we can evaporate the class. The particles now have so much energy that they can completely overcome the bonds that were previously holding them together, and they are free to fill the entirety of their surroundings. However, cool them back down and you take away that energy. They turn back from a gas to a liquid, and then finally 
back to the solid from whence they came. So to recap, a physical reaction is where you change the arrangement of the particles without changing the chemical makeup of that substance. We've seen a lot of physical reactions today moving from a solid to a liquid to a gas. But now, it's chemistry trivia time. The temperature of liquid nitrogen, why that's minus 196 degrees centigrade. Dry ice, that's a relatively tropical minus 78 degrees centigrade. And raw onions, well, they're quite disgusting. Oh.